This is Frederick Meekins of the Issachar Apologetics Research Institute. In an oration before the National Press Club, Head Episcopal Bishop Michael Curry denounced individualism as a kind of golden calf. However, this was euphemistic praise of collectivism and an assault against economic liberty. For in his tirade against consumerism, the free market and individual rights, it seems nary a word was articulated against some of the ultimate forms of self-centeredness, such as gay marriage and abortion on demand. Bishop Curry warned that selfishness is such a blight that, left unchecked, it could apparently destroy the planet. Yet apparently he himself has not yet evolved into a perfected communal state. For this ecclesiastical hierarch has not yet announced that he will forego the extensive travel characteristic of his position if the church is to emphasize the perspective that certain persons are no more distinctive than any other. It is being asked, would it be appropriate for Melanie Trump to be First Lady, despite her past of questionable photo spreads in which she appeared particularly immodest? While worthy of criticism, seems this is less offensive than the depravity alleged to take place at Bohemian Grove, John Kennedy defiling staff members in the White House pool, or Bill Clinton having a little recreation under the desk in the Oval Office. Apparently, these kinds of acts don't disqualify an individual from a position of high honor, but whether or not Polaroids commemorating such instances apparently do. Hillary Clinton insists that, instead of building walls, the nation needs to tear down barriers. Should, be, should she be elected, will a priority of her administration be the elimination of the assorted barriers and traffic obstructions erected throughout Washington, D.C. in the name of the pervasive national security state? The same filthy beatniks jacked out of shape over Donald Trump tweeting a Mussolini quotation probably, probably regularly peruse Mao's little red book while wearing their cruddy Che Guevara t-shirts. If Donald Trump is expected to repudiate the endorsement of controversialist David Duke, is Bernie Sanders expected to repudiate himself for being an avowed socialist? Did President Obama repudiate the endorsement he received from the Communist Party USA? In a podcast rant posted at sermonaudio.com, Jason Cooley insisted that internet ministry does not count as a church. Given that his is a ministry that claims it holds to no position that cannot be backed up by the warrant of divine revelation, from what passage is this prohibition derived? If the Cooleyites want to contend that the only valid churches are those operating from the sanction of historically authorized churches to the extent that any good works done, a, done as a result of unauthorized internet activity will be burned up on the day of judgment like hay and stubble, does Pastor Cooley intend to bring his church and ministry under the direct control of the Vatican? In his condemnation of Internet ministries, Pastor Jason Cooley, in a sermon audio podcast, itself an Internet ministry, insisted that, if you are a mere pew-filling Christian, if you as a mere pew-filling Christian have a question or a problem, you are obligated to seek the answers from sanctioned Christian authorities rather than dare to research the concern on your own over the Internet. Don't the acolytes of the Watchtower, the weirdos that just happen to know to knock on the door Saturday mornings when you're either sitting 
are either sitting on the can or romping in the sack with your spouse make nearly the same threat to those ensnared by that particular variety of spiritual deception? And who is one to turn to if the power structure of your particular church is what is giving you troubles or raising your doubts? Wouldn't that particular chain of command be sufficiently removed? Would not that particular chain of command be sufficiently removed from the situation in order to render impartial counsel? The podcast, Standing for the Truth, posted an episode pondering the role played by sports in the life of the believer. In Wisconsin, from where the program originates, it was noted that, on the days of Green Bay Packer games, Churches offering two services would have a higher attendance at the earlier. So long as folks show up that week, does it really matter at what time they attended? The Pentagon insists that parents and schools must cut junk food so that the armed services can muster a sufficient number of recruits. And what if parents refuse to comply? The American people don't breed children for the greater glory of the fatherland. Mitt Romney emphasized that Donald Trump did not build his own business, but instead inherited his fortune. That's what we call an example of the dye job calling the toupee black. House Speaker Paul Ryan forcefully condemned the supposed endorsement of Donald Trump by alleged white supremacists such as David Duke. Was the Speaker as emphatic in his in his repudiation of past remarks by Jeb Bush, insisting that the, the wanton violation of America's borders was an act of love, and that the racially mixed are superior to those whose parents procreated with those of their own breed. A pastor remarked that accumulating facts about the Bible is not learning. He insisted that one can only learn by doing. Does that mean one cannot learn about what the Israelites endured to take the Holy Land from the indigenous pagans unless one goes out and kills a few? The cover story of an issue of the Nation magazine boldly warns Donald Trump is dangerous. And Barack Obama was not in his threats to fundamentally transform America. At least Trump wants to make America great again and not necessarily destroy everything that we know and love. Was this propaganda outlet as blunt and forthright in regards to the Occupy movement and Black Lives Matter? As shocking as some of Donald Trump's outbursts are, I don't believe that, they have, that there have been reports of Trump supporters defecating on the sides of police cruisers, or perhaps, even more interestingly, looting the same wig shop on multiple occasions. A number of celebrities are threatening to leave if Donald Trump is elected. But isn't that an incentive to actually vote for the mouthy mogul? Cogitating upon what might transpire if Trump is denied the Republican nomination at a brokered convention. Clinton flack Paula Begala fretted on CNN that violence might erupt. For unlike Democrats, these activists are supposedly armed. And what about in cities such as Baltimore, Oakland, and Ferguson that are Democratic strongholds where welfare leeches and their sub subversive handlers rampaged in the streets and laid waste to private property in the path of looting mobs. Father, Father Jonathan Morris, in a Fox News interview, remarked how he thinks churches are better off without armed security. Does the Roman Catholic Church intend to call upon the Pope to disband the Swiss Guard? often touting machine guns as a display of the pontiff's reliance upon divine protection? According to an article titled Biobots Roll Out, published in the April issue of Discover magazine, 
scientists are attaching an assortment of wires and Wi-Fi receptors to insects such as moths and roaches for the purposes purposes well controlling these creatures for an assortment of surveillance and intelligence missions. Perhaps an even more important question to ask is that to prevent this from be what is to prevent this from being done to human beings? In his condemnation of internet ministry, Pastor Jason Cooley insisted that such efforts are undertaken from the perspective of despising the local church. Maybe so in, in certain cases, but it can also be done to protect the flock from those imposing their own idiosyncrasy on others as if such preferences were revealed doctrine. In a sermon audio podcast, Jason Cooley categorized the universal invisible church as a dangerous heresy. For apparently the believer is much more edified and protected by being conditioned to believe that the only acceptable Christians free from errors in the eyes of God are a minuscule percentage of Baptists and that no matter how bad a particular congregation one might find oneself trapped in in terms of belittlement or even abuse, one ought not one ought not want to escape for fear of being cast out into uttermost darkness. In his condemnation of the concept of the universal invisible church, Pastor Jason Cooley insisted that the doctrine was Catholic and Protestant, but not Baptist. As someone that positions himself in the camp of sola scriptura, Shouldn't he instead concern himself as to whether or not a doctrine is instead biblical or Christian? For the Baptist Church is nowhere explicitly referenced by name in the pages of divine revelation, just as in the case of that form of ecclesiology's Protestant or Catholic counterparts. In responding in expounding on the superiority of the physicalized church over the universal invisible church as manifested in the form of internet ministries, Pastor Jason Cooley insisted that, unlike internet ministries which are accountable to no one, in the context of a local church such as his own, that he would be required to answer to the men of his church if he got out of line in terms of deed or doctrine. Maybe so in terms of theory. However, in a church such as his own, as characterized by his sermon audio podcasts, where those that disagree with him on secondary matters of opinion are dealt with by shouting down and verbalized ridicule, would a man that was not in jackbooted lockstep with this pastor be granted a position of authority or even allowed to accrue any influence before being kicked out? For in these kinds of churches, most are usually manipulated into being afraid of the pastor. This is Frederick Meekins.